Hello there guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. In this video, we're gonna be laying every horse at 1.3. Yep, for four races. And what you're gonna see in this video is that two selections actually lay at 1.04 odds and get beaten. So sit back, watch the racing, uh, skim through, like press fast forward if it gets a bit too boring, but watch the end part if you wanna see the final summary of what happens. And like I mentioned in this video, it's up to you how you select these, but this is just what's happened in real life. Enjoy. Hello there guys, today's video, we're gonna be doing a video on laying every horse at 1.3. Yes, 1.3, because I've done a video before, laying every horse at 2.0, it's had 43,000 views. I've had requests for 1.2, 1.1, not one for 1.3, but I will do one at 1.3 right now. And we're gonna do it, at, start off at Yarmouth. I'm gonna do races back to back, apart from the 210 race, because I've already got a trade in that and I don't wanna complicate things. So I put 1.3 in for three pound. I don't know why I put three pound in there, but I put three pound and press keep on all the selections. And now we're gonna fire the uh, live video up and see what happens. Um, personally, I think we'll lose on this. It is too. Um, Tells me it's too a small amount of data to do this over four races, and you'd also probably want to select certain races. Now, a lot of people say, "Are oh, this X races? Some races are better to do this than others." I agree. But that's why I'm doing this uh, four back-to-back -back races because everyone's different. Some people think three-mile races create more drama because you could have a faller there, especially in novice chases. Some people think a five furlong race creates more drama. Some people think a five furlong race with 30 runners, or a horse like a race like the Cambridgeshire, is the ideal kind of race. I don't know, tap away below guys, but this video is random races, no selection process. So this video is just done on four back-to-back -back races, laying 1.3 and see what happens. I'm um, just waiting for these to load up. I did go racing Sunday as it goes. Today, I don't even know what day it is today. Wednesday, look, stare me right in my face. Went to Leicester, family fun day. It was pretty good there. They had blow up castle and everything for the kids. Roasting hot as well. So, you know, it's a little bit wrong racing these horses, isn't it? Over 30 degrees or whatever this is going to be this week. But um, I was a bit disappointed at Leicester with the uh, ice cream van. I didn't have the, my favourite ice cream of choice at the moment, oyster. I'm really into the oysters now. Anyway, enough of my waffle. Let's put this race on. Thanks, Matt. Very kind. Stand by, they're ready. Gates back and away they go, and slowly away was Crystal Dawn. It was a lightly pace angle in this race, and has missed the kick completely in the kazoo handicap over the seven furlongs. Vitesse Toussaint is the early leader here as they go through the first of those furlongs. The Little Sunflower, the green cap, racing in second. Then Brazen Arrow in third, followed then by Lincoln Red in the striped cap, who's taking a bit of a hold. Then High Ho Silver, the grey horse, followed then by the favourite, uh, Priscilla's Wish, who's in around about sixth at the moment. There then followed by Crystal Dawn, and right at the rear of the field is Tillsworth Valerie, as they make their way now down towards the final three and a half furlongs or so and it's Vitesse Dusson who's got to the front just maybe slowing things down a little bit to in second position Little Sunflower then Brazen Arrow followed then by Lincoln Red Priscilla's Wish the quarter jacket light blue sleeves trying to get involved then the grey high ho silver followed then by Crystal Dawn and Tillsworth Valerie is still at the rear of the field down towards the closing stage as they come now just over two and a half furlongs left to travel and it's Vitesse Dusson towards the centre of the track now the sheepskin knows but here comes Priscilla's Wish delivering a challenge down the grandstand side in between the pair little sunflowers so one laid. down the one spot then Lincoln one Red laid. down the far side of the track Two and after profit. that Brazen Arrow down towards the final furlong Doesn't they come like now and it's Priscilla's laid. Wish who leads to Vitesse Dusson who's trying to battle back Priscilla's Wish and Vitesse Dusson deep inside the final furlong they go so this is a typical kind of thing that happens in in these um you just want more than one to lay to profit uh that didn't happen obviously um 
I have done recently a load of lays like at 1.03, 1.04, and I did find them profitable. But I do believe that you've got to have a data set of around, say, a sample set of a thousand to get a realistic opinion. You know, um, we'll pick this up at the 210 race, the next race. But as you can see, this is a seven furlong handicap. Uh, the 210 race, the next race that we'll do on this will be, sorry, the two o'clock race at Salisbury. That'll be a six furlong. So all most of these races that we're going to do are going to be six or seven furlongs. They did do, um, Racing TV or someone did do, uh, they went around on Instagram asking people if they knew how many furlongs were in a mile. I couldn't believe that hardly anyone knew. So if you don't know, you're not in the minority. It is, it's eight furlongs, but if you want to argue the toss, it's not. It's 7.9 something furlongs, just for the record. So these races are pretty short. We'll pick it back up at a two o'clock race. So we're back, guys, and I'll tell you what's shocking, right? I just, I've recorded two races talking to myself, which probably you should do anyway, like 10 viewers or something. But yeah, I don't want to do that again. Um, so we'll start off with this Salisbury race. We'll just lay all of this on here 1.3. Okay, so we're uh, quicker ways of doing this, just bang it in here quickly. And we've got it on Racing TV. There's a difference between the Racing TV that Betfair display and the Racing TV that Joe Punter gets at home on the screen, I've noticed. Uh, it's quite a significant um, lag that you'll get on Racing TV, which is a shame, really. Um, I did have a Racing TV membership when I said about Leicester. I went racing there a couple of days ago. I had a free ticket. I, I had one of those racing TV offers. They offer you a £10 a month. And they wanted me to sign up for a year, so I took it. But I went racing quite a few times, and including one of them was Goodwood Gordon Enclosure, for example. It's £70 a ticket usually, and you can take a guess there. So if you, because um, I was asked if it's worthwhile, if you like going to racing and to ones like that that cost £70, it's worthwhile, yeah. If you're a punter that loves your racing um, and you want to watch the whole program and what they talk about and stuff, um, yeah, it's worthwhile. If you're a trader, that's another reason why it might be useful is because, say, you've got a weekends or bank holidays, they might have, say, between four and eight meetings on that they screen. It's rare that they'll have eight meetings, by the way. But you can see if there's four screens, you can quarterize just one screen. So you've got two screens uh, at home. You can have four displaying what's going on because when you've got so many meetings at bank holiday or weekends, when there's some of them that are late, races could go off at different times, which traders are more than aware of. It is a, such a ball lake sometimes. Um, but having that uh, is really good, especially if there's like eight meetings because then you can keep one eye on the screen, see what's going on. Um, I'm going to put this race on now. One, two, three, six runners here. You could argue that it's not worth doing it in the six runners like this. But, you know, I've seen three runner races present uh, these. You know, like, it's the old punter's old saying, isn't it? Uh, always back the outsider in a three horse race. And I don't know the stats behind it, but there seems to be more of those that come in than not. I don't know, guys. What's your opinion? Now let's play this race, that's enough of me talking. Five furlongs this one, be over in no time. Off and racing, not a good start from Nordic Glory, only marginally better from Glamorous Breeze, who sits in behind the pace as they race through the first of five furlongs for the SH Jones Wines handicap. Amor de Mivida, sharply away, leads up. Meanwhile, Nordic Glory's lost even further ground and is a long, long way back. Up front, So Smart comes through to join Amor de Mivida. These two go tearing off from Symbol of Hope, Glamorous Breeze towards the outside, and Delegate This Lords comes next under Jason Watson, and they are clear from Nordic Glory, who is unable to get anywhere near 
near them. Racing then down to the two marker. Blue sleeves of So Smart coming there with the lead. In behind, Glamorous Breeze being delivered, looking very confident on the wide outside. Symbol of hope between runners as Amor de Mivida weakens and Delegate This Lord plugs on. So Smart, Glamorous line. Breeze still on the bridle. William Cox now. looking full of confidence on Glamorous Breeze. Pushes the buttons uh, now. Nearly. Glamorous Breeze, So Smart won't go Come away. On, baby. Tight finish between them. No. Glamorous breeze and sm so smart who would not lie down. It goes oh, to the judge. That market. that market was all over the place. This here went into odds on at some point. 1.8 there that went into 42 pound. Not considerable money, but it might have picked up our money. This went out quite a bit. Glamorous breeze. But yeah, that's the closest one yet. But I should imagine, like I said, this is probably going to happen in all these four. I'll be surprised if we get one. But, um, you know, like I was saying earlier about laying odds on four races, there's not really much point to it. I just want to do this just to represent it in a video. But I can't really sit here for a thousand videos because no one's got the time for that. It'd be nice though for a YouTube revenue, but maybe that's an idea. See you in the next race. Next race being the 240, and hopefully I'll switch the audio in there. So you wouldn't believe it, guys. The race that I couldn't record in did supply one of these. Uh, so I thought I'd just drop this in here now. Uh, the 240 at Beverly, uh, I had a trade in this, so I couldn't display this one. But this one here, Spirit of Applause, you can see, um, didn't win. Emily's Eclipse won it. Um, and it laid at 1.04 there and for in running it's a considerable amount of money when I say not a lot but it's not like the usual four three pounds and etc there's a solid amount of money in there your money would get taken um, so it just goes to show that I mean I'm recording these randomly this stuff does happen if you was laying at 104 105 you would have got your lay in 105, I dare say, because it went into 104. Um, and I couldn't record it. But if we was recording in this one, this would obviously have been one. Because our 1.3 would have been right down here. And thousands prior to that had been laid. And this one here, Emily's Eclipse, won it eventually. That went out to 70.0. So, you know, if you look at the other side of the spectrum, if you use a people don't just um, lay in running, they back as well. So we're doing the same thing at sunny old Yarmouth today. I say sunny old Yarmouth because I'm looking down and it's apparently 27 degrees at the moment. And it's going to get even hotter towards the end of the week. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Two to one Bell Street. But here we go. We're getting this one on. I'm going to say we're going to lose another 90 pence here. Um, but the race prior just proved that you can win on um, races. How many runners were in that race at the 240 at Beverly? There was more runners there. Uh, but it's not like a huge field because the typical comment that you will get here, which is a reasonable statement, will be the best races to do these in are um, the best races are say um, 30 runner races, 20 runner races, handicaps of five furlong, all this kind of thing. So we're just waiting for these to load up at Yarmouth um, so this is the third race of four races that I'll be displaying on here and so it's a bit pointless and that but you do get to see other little bits and pieces like I just showed you there that 104 getting laid have any of you guys um, laid at low odds when I say low odds at say 102 103 104 105 under 1.1 that on horse racing because people tend to choose other sports you know such as you know football tennis tennis is quite volatile you know tennis I guess I would say would produce more 101s um, 
But horse racing, surprisingly, you wouldn't believe how many do get turned over. I've done previous videos. If you look through my videos, I've done at least five different videos of proof that horses getting beaten at 104, 105, 106. And it happens so frequently, and that's why I do do in running lays on top of some of my arbs or match bets sometimes. Because if you've got certain races that give you a free bet if the horse comes second or whatever, and there's so much difference of that if that horse wins or if it loses. So if you've got a lot of money back if it comes second, third or fourth, sometimes it's worthwhile to do that. Anyway, stop jabbering. Let's watch. What's racing Sky 415 Restricted Maiden over the 2000. Bell Street Bridie was out well for Ryan Moore. So too was Ward Castle, the orange and blue colours. Then Forsum in the stripes is racing in third. Right up the inside is Made of Gold in the orange and black colours. And towards the rear at the moment, Jakovec Cavan and Renz Rose, the slow starter, is the back marker of the sextet. So they've gone a couple of furlongs or so here. It's still well grouped up field. It's Bell Street Bridie who grabbed the initiative early for Ryan Moore, who leads. Two in second position Ward Castle the orange colours there with the blue cap covered up on the inside rail there in the hands of Marco Gianni is made of gold then foursome for the Mark and uh, Haggis combination racing in fourth followed then by Renz Rose the brown colours up the inside and towards the outer Jakovec Cavan who's just about the back marker but there wouldn't be much in it making the turn at the top of the track very shortly and out in front it's Bell Street Bridie who leads them by length or so now to in second made of gold who's just nosing through ahead of Ward Castle though Ward Castle maybe still just ahead of Made of Gold. They're then followed in fourth position by Forsum and then Renz Rose last but one and Jakovec Cavan continues to be at the back of the field. They've swung for home a fraction over half a mile still to go and Bell Street Bridie leads. Ryan Moore just beginning to up the pace a little bit to in second position Ward Castle. Made of Gold now being driven along by Guiani. Then Forsum Jakovec Cavan gets a little bit closer now from the back of the field and Renz Rose has been relegated to last. Heading on down towards the final three furlongs still a pretty well grouped up field and it's Bell Street Bridie who grabbed the lead early now just being uh, niggled along a bit more by Moore then on the outside Ward Castle Jakovec Cavan down the centre of the track is staying on quite well Made of Gold needs one or two gaps to appear and they are forthcoming now inside the final quarter of a mile Bell Street Bridie is finding for Moore out in front and goes on now by a couple of lengths and she leads as they head on down inside the final furlong of Bell Street Bridie by three or four now to Made of Gold in second Jakovec Cavan so it doesn't happen when they, they get recorded this one's done the usual same old trait so I'm down 90 pence times three so two pounds 70 down for this video uh, the next race will be called Salisbury I've never been racing at Salisbury anyone been there um, five runners like I said I don't believe that you should drop these out if you're doing races consecutively that you should say oh no this is only five runners why should I bother I'd still include it if I was doing that kind of thing but if I was someone being selective, like I said, you could be the, the guy that chooses three mile novice chases, or you could be the guy that chooses 16 plus runner, five furlong handicap sprints. I would, I would remain consistent. That would be one of the main things that I would do with that kind of thing. Another profitable strategy, guys, even using Gubb the Counts is value betting. I did do this video here about value betting. Um, you can sign up to Rebel Betting free. Um, you can use their facilities for uh, seven days. So links down below for that. I'll see you in three o'clock at Salisbury. So we're back for the final race, the three o'clock. So, so far we've lost three races of 90 pence. But, as I proved on the other race, the, um, the race that I couldn't include, that one of them laid at 104 and got beaten. So these are the kind of things that you're going to notice. Like I said, you've got to be consistent. If you're going to be in this kind of game, you've got to do make some rules and stick to it. Don't chop and change your mind. I'm just making this video for the sake of making one at 1.3. There are some little points of interest that you could pick out and say, well, that's useful. That So that's the purpose of me making this video. There might be little snippets that you might find useful. I did a trade last night. Um, I see a horse getting backed. And this one here was eight to one this huddle to mac which is 9.0 uh with bet 365 but there's been a non-runner so i've got a few quid on 18 22 nearly 30 quid on at seven point blah blah laid it at 6.0 and under 
and I currently got a 5.53 green but there's been a non run it's 8.5 percent now on fixed odds that is 10 percent I think the usually um, the fixed odds there's a lot of the time you'll find that there's no uh, deduction when you get ones that are 8.5 percent there you go it's 10 10 percent there so I've backed it eight to one so even with the 10 percent reduction there's still going to be just over seven to one which is 8.0 so that's one to keep an eye on later not that there's any um benefit to it that it's been backed because sometimes it's just come nowhere just to wind you up i've had some awesome ops before where i've um i've underlaid them and they're just not come in you know so um but i do like looking at, at trades and seeing what happens so um Salisbury is one of those tracks I've always thought of going to. I uh, don't know what it's like there. Uh, when you actually go to the tracks and then watch the races back, it's a lot more interesting because you know how the course it lays out, like the landscape of Epsom, for example. Unless you've been to that track, you wouldn't know like how undulating that track is. And if you do, the reason you might be thinking, well, I couldn't give a toss, mate. The reason I say this is because if you're going to be an in-play trader, and you know how the layout of these courses are, it will benefit you. Because if you some horses don't like turning right-handed, left-handed, for example, Desert Orchid, probably the most famous horse that um, I didn't know whether he could run left-handed around Cheltenham, it has a big effect on how the horses run. So if you're an in-play trader, the knowledge is power, I believe. And um, it does affect some of the horses. Some horses are lazy when they're put under pressure. They're just like human beings. You know, like you've got some fighters, <coughs> Joshua. If you put a bit of pressure on him, he buckles. And some horses are anti Joshua's. I, I haven't got nothing against anti Joshua. He's done incredible for who he is. This race is late off, by the way. Should be going off in a minute. And to be honest, I'll be relieved to get to the end of these races because I keep forgetting to press the audio on. I've actually recorded six of these. And I'm exhausted. I need to. I need to get some refreshments soon. Maybe the ice cream van to turn up for an oyster. Wash it down with a can of Monster. But let's switch the audio onto this. As you can see, 3.4, 4.0, This is the kind of thing that interests me. When you've got a, say you've got a bigger field of ten horse race, and you'll find one at the bottom that's been backed. I always keep my eye on things like that. You know, like, um, because often you can find patterns. You know, this is traded up to nine, so it's not really that much of a backed horse. But let's put the commentary on this, and this is the last race. They're off and racing. Awkward sort of jump from both Leuven Power and Greg the Great. It didn't stop Greg the Great this though, one here took coming a bit through of a to dispute the lead right over on the far Greg side the rail. Great. Interesting that Be Lucky My Son and Leuven Power went out a bit. just go with him. Uh, the other two stayed out wide for a long time. However, Holly Doyle has now switched Duelist across to join them on the far side. Murphy's Dream still happy to keep his own company down the middle of the track and he's right up with the pace as well. So Murphy's Dream John Fahey on board at the moment, ploughing a lone furrow. The other four are now together on the far side rail with Greg the Great leading narrowly from Duelist, Leuven Power and Be Lucky My Son are the ones in behind those two front runners. So now they head on downhill with still Murphy's Dream hanging out wide. The leader on the rail is Greg the Great, who's followed then by Be Lucky My Son. Now Murphy's Dream has cut right across and is now in front, Murphy's Dream from Greg the Great pushed along. There, followed by Be Lucky My Son. On the outside, Leuven Power and Duelist has dropped back to be last of all. Heading then with just over two and a half furlongs left to run in the Michael Brunton Memorial. And the leaders are Greg the Great on the rail together with Murphy's Dream. Now we've got Be Lucky My Son and Leuven Power both staking their claims as well. Got a little bit tight for Murphy's Dream in behind them, but Leuven Power has quickened on by far the best. So this race did look at one moment like it's going to create some drama because I think most of these horses here traded into below 3.5. Uh, this one here, 
where are we? 2.44, Greg the Great, Murphy's Dream, went into 1.8, this one here went in as well, be lucky my son, um, 2.92, um, but none of them wanted to play ball with the odds on numbers. And this one went into 5.2 so all of them in, went in this video originally was supposed to be back in every horse at 3.0 because I've had a lot of requests for 3.0 video however the reason I didn't do that today was because all these races today consist of races like this uh, laying every horse at 3.0 would be better suited uh, to either a, a big race meeting like when you've got these big meetings at Newmarket um, or a Saturday for sure so just before I wrap this video up because people might comment that oh you're wasting your time in these kind of races say six elections like in this race um, although I've recorded four races these races were all almost back to back and two of these included this Safran for example laid at 1.04 there you can see there's a nice chunk there over a grand at 105 good amounts there 106 107 um, and it got beaten as you can see high 1000 there and bungly won it so it's all down to opinion uh, you see there there's been two lay at 104 yet my 13.3 lays didn't lay in the four races recorded however within two races in between of those races two got beaten at 104 so make what you like out of that um it just proves that you can get these in six selection races over seven furlongs um and all these races have been with today between five furlongs and one mile two uh please subscribe guys if you haven't subscribed yet uh there's plenty of videos on my channel um, including this laying every horse at 2.0 I'll leave the card for that at the end laying every horse at 1.5 shop Arbin uh, there's plenty of Sharbin videos on this channel extra places um, combined liability two up everything so you just come in the search bar type in what you want to see or just type in two up Arb Hunter or Sharbin Arb Hunter for example uh, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video if you're not following me on Instagram, pitbets at Instagram or at pitbets at Instagram, whatever.